welcome back friends. I guess it's been maybe a couple months back. I did a video uh, titled um, Prioritize and Execute. And this is not my concept. I, I got this from uh, Jocko Willink, Jocko Willink, ex-Navy SEAL, uh, who has put out a book, I think under that same title, about um, you know helping guys and, and girls, you know, everyone to kind of get your life uh, prioritized and in order. And this has been so invaluable to me uh, and helped me uh, become, stop wasting time. Uh, so I wanted to kind of share with you today, I'm just going to bring you along on uh, kind of um, uh, my routine and some ways I've got of uh, getting a lot of stuff done. So what I've been doing, and he's really inspired me, I definitely want to give credit where credit's due. This is all his and I'm, I'm just stealing it. Or I'm just utilizing it. Uh, what, imitation's a sincerest form, form of flattery. Uh, but he does, um, I, I subscribe to his Instagram page and, and it's really interesting every morning, or not every, I think it's every morning, he does a picture of his wristwatch. Uh, and usually, what's, and what he's showing, and, and he's giving, he's, he's, I guess he's doing it to be accountable to all of his subscribers, uh, what time he wakes up. And it's usually sometime around four o'clock, 4.30, somewhere in there, really early, does his workout. And he says that, the, that freedom only comes through discipline. And it took me it took me a long time to get my head around this because I when I think of discipline I think of just the opposite of freedom I think of um, depriving yourself I don't know maybe discipline and deprive uh, they, they kind of I don't know why but I had in my mind I had kind of that stuck in my mind like I don't want discipline I want freedom but when you are completely unstructured uh, and don't have discipline you have no freedom a perfect example was yesterday so yesterday I got up at um, I got up at 4:30 I was up and going at 4:30 and I had the day before I'd written out my schedule so at 4:30 I got up and I made my coffee and, and I so I, I planned out the whole day 4:30 to 5 o'clock I had my coffee and I answered emails and then I edited from 5 to 6 and from 6 to 8 I shot video and then at eight o'clock, that's when the family is all pretty much awake and, and going. Uh, we had half hour of our family worship. We do that at eight o'clock and that's, that's for a half hour. And then Jack and I do our convict conditioning, our workout, and that takes uh, about an hour and then a recovery meal or a breakfast. That's when I do my juice. And so here we are at 9.30. Uh, and then you um, remember how I talk about doing, keeping your house clean and doing my three things. And what that means to me is uh, whenever I go somewhere and I see, like I go to my shop, I put away three things or I go to my, my bedroom and there's socks and things on the floor, I put those things away. And over time, over weeks and months, you become really organized and, and it, doesn't, it doesn't pile up. Because what I was finding is I would not put away things after projects and then I would lose an entire day, like a whole Sunday, uh, just Recleaning the shop, recleaning the shop, and wondering why does this get so messy? Well, it gets so messy because the job's not done uh, until you do the cleanup. Uh, so that's really helped me. So we went on. So I, what I'm doing? So in addition to the picking up the three things, I'm picking I'm picking three house chores uh, that need do, doing. Let, for example, yesterday the bathroom door. You know, we live in an old house and it sags and moves, and the bathroom door was sticking, and it took two hands, you know, to close it. And we've been battling that for months. And so I put that on my list took the door off, took 15, 20 minutes, took it to the shop, planed it down, uh, fixed that. Uh, Mrs. W wanted to have some kindling because we're starting, you know, we're getting ready to start having fires because it's getting cold. And so I cut her, you know, a good several weeks supply of worth of kindling. Um, and the other thing was to put the air conditioners away. You know, just those simple things that I look at that have been nagging me and it was really great. So I got those done and I gave myself an hour for those projects. Um, and then um, 11 to 12 was to, the video would be read up and it was to post and you know, there's a little bit of work on the back end for videos. So at 12 o'clock, I had essentially eight hours of work done. Eight hours, it, it just it staggered me. I had to keep counting on my, my fingers backwards. Like, is that, have I really been up and doing stuff for eight hours? I had uh, got three home projects done. Uh, I had uh, got my workout in with my son. Uh, I'd got our family worship done. Uh, I'd had, um, got my video shot and, and edited. And what was really great is that since the work was all done, we loaded up the van and met, had my parents come out and Matt and we got to spend a really nice afternoon down at the river guilt-free because normally I would have thought, you know, com be, coming from a, of a, a working stiff background, you know, and punching the clock and the time cards and all of that, you know, I'm so conditioned for doing that for so many years, you almost feel kind of guilty when you, uh, when you're at 12 o'clock and you're not working, you know, but the fact that I had gotten up early, discipline, it was discipline that got me up early, didn't want to do it, equals freedom. 
I had the freedom at 12 o'clock uh, to go and to spend a nice evening uh, with my family and my parents and, and guilt-free. So it was really, really wonderful uh, how that works. And that, you know, I understood the concept, but it didn't really, really sink into me until yesterday when we were pulling out of the driveway at 12 o'clock and I had eight hours of work in. It was really nice. So, um, so we're going to be doing that same thing today and the rest of the week. So uh, I'll just bring you along. I've got a few projects to do, uh, but right now uh, Jack and I just finished our convict, condi co convict conditioning. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll give you the results at the end of the week of that, uh, but we've got to go in and uh, make our juice. Still down to one meal a day. Uh, update on that. What I'm doing is uh, we're doing our workout and then I'm having, uh, we're doing a, a, a juice, right? Uh, and then um, one big meal at two o'clock and that's it. And I've lost, uh, I've lost 16 pounds. Um, I've gone down a pant size and back into 34s. Um, I'm putting on uh, muscle, uh, getting rid of the belly. I and mean, it's re really working and I'm really excited. And I feel about, feel good about it. Uh, and it's just something that seems to be able to work, work for me. So let's go make our juice and then uh, we'll go do a few projects around the house. So we noticed that Heart Racer was really preoccupied with the, the bottom of the freezer and I realized I did something so stupid yesterday. I took, we, we bought half a, a cow from our neighbors and I took, I was looking for a particular cut and I took these out and I set them up on there and I, they sat there 24 hours and I forgot to put them away. Uh, what a moron. Well, Heart Racer, looks like you are going to eat well today. Now that we scared off all the vegans and they all unsubscribed, we can get to our juicing. All right, so what do we have on tap for today? We've got a, I like to throw a lemon in there. For, it, it just gives it a little bit of a, well, it just gives it a little bit of a lemon flavor. I think a lemon covers a multitude of sin. Um, throw an apple in there too. The apple and the carrots. I like that uh, because it gives a little bit of sweetness. And then so we've got cucumbers, we've got uh, fresh kale, we've got spinach, we got broccoli, carrots, and did I say cucumbers? And today's juice. I don't know a lot about diet, but you can't tell me that that's, that can't, that's got to be good for you. Look at the greenness. It tastes so bad. The smell of it will just put you right off your roll. You are very dramatic. If you were a super taster, you would understand, but you, you like this. This is easy for you. I don't know that I like this, but I am happy to have good health. Let's see you do the straight up kale. I dare you. No, 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 no. It just gives me the willies. You know what it is better Gives then. me the willies. You know what it is better then. What's that? That beet juice, the one with the lumps in it. Oh, you said that, man. <laughs> that you, was, that was... you said that. There is, there's three things. There's three things. The worst things in life are one are beets, two is call is cauliflower, and three is fermented food. Is potato salad. Oh, what about sauerkraut? And, and, a, a, and no, there's not three. There's four. And pickles. What about sauerkraut? I would eat a mountain of sauerkraut before I'd even be in the same room. I won't even let Mrs. W cook broccoli in the house. It's cauliflower, because it's the smell to me is, I mean, it's worse than it's worse than than rotten bodies. This video, you guys, uh, now please, it vegetable those of you on the other end of the screen, please know he is being a little dramatic right now. <laughs> do I have a, a hissy fit when you cook broccoli or cauliflower? You do. Yeah. You do. It's, it's not uh, my food. My. But it, we cannot coexist you, in the but kitchen. But you don't not let me. Now, when Mrs. W, she likes it because she discovers it with Velveeta. <laughs> yeah, I love Velveeta, right, Cody? <laughs> it's one of my favorites right there, along with cheese whiz. All right, since you drank all my kale juice, i got to make it again. I have an idea. Let's see if the sweet loaf is a super taster, because no super taster could handle straight kale juice without pulling a face. Let's see. I don't know. Ready? Sweet Loaf won't eat it. She hates everything. <laughs> See, there, I told you. <laughs> Out of the mouths of babes. <laughs> you some more? Literally. <laughs> oh, poor thing. Let's get her some sauerkraut. We know she likes that. That's, that's my, that's my sauerkraut. experience right yeah, there. That is blueberry. my experience. You poor thing. I told you it was terrible. <laughs> and she eats everything. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have blueberries. Still 
better way to say I love you. It's not fair. Well, you see you got something out of college. You just come over here to gloat. Unlike Mrs. W, I have to have a water chaser. Ugh. How many days they said it takes to be something to become a habit? 28. You know, someone made a good point the other day. They said, I, I, I wouldn't drink that disgusting stuff. I'd rather not drink it and live five years less. I think it would be a better trade-off. And I, that's, that's a good argument. Disgusting. I really think you're going to see some changes and benefits from drinking it, though. Yeah, well, <coughs> what? <coughs> it's so horrible. One unintended consequence that I had was not expecting is, so you guys know who watched the channel for a long time, that unfortunately I've had uh, lost all my hair. I've had to wear a toupee. And some people have said that... Um, <laughs> that it was, you know, didn't look, look very natural. Well, the thing about it is that I think it's the kale. It is stimulated, stimulated hair growth. What do you, I like it. Mrs. W, it makes her go crazy. Just don't get any, just don't get too close to fire. Get your soul glow on. I just, I don't understand it. I've never seen a baby that would choose sauerkraut. She, if you put peaches and strawberry, not strawberries, peaches and blueberries and, and nice, you know, sweet fruit in there, she'll throw it on the ground and just eat the sauerkraut. It's delicious, she knows. Blue bus. Her favorite. She, she is a connoisseur. She has tried different types of sauerkraut and this is her favorite. She won't, she won't, doesn't like the other ones. Well, she'll eat them, but this is definitely her favorite. Better than kale juice, I'm sure. That was really funny. So we spent so long making juice, I don't think we have time to go to the home projects. We'll push that up until tomorrow. So we've got to do some manly manners. It does look nice. I could be in Jet Magazine. All right. Manly manners tells us this. Don't omit to bring home an occasional bunch of flowers or a few chocolates. Your wife will value even a penny bunch of violets for your thoughts of her. Boy, isn't that the truth. So, you know, it's a good reminder to us as men because those little things don't seem to mean as much. Um, uh, not that they're not important, but uh, little gifts and uh, maybe leaving notes and things don't mean as much to, to men, by and large, as it does to women. Now, that's a very broad a very broad interpretation, but I think by and large that's true because I know how much it means. So, and I don't do it often enough, but I, I actually, the funny, this is really kind of interesting that this came up. So as I was cutting kindling yesterday, I was thinking, what could I do for Mrs. W? It was kind of, she likes to have the kindling cut. She's happy to start the fires, you know, when she wants one, but she hates cutting the kindling. She just doesn't, you know, the ax and all that. So that's my job. Uh, so what I did is I buried inside the kindling, you know, little notes, you know, just little notes or something to say, you know what, I love you or thank you for marrying me or I'm, I'm thinking about you. Um, it means the world to her. Uh, she, I think every one of those that I've given her, I, sometimes I put them in the freezer or all, you can do like a post-it note, stick it to her car or put something, you know, a piece of chocolate or something that she likes inside of her purse. It's not the note. It's not the chocolate, it's not the flowers, it's got nothing to do with, uh, even if you uh, uh, buy a lavish gift and something expensive, it's the thought that you were thinking about her that's so imp so important. So that's really a great advice, you know, so th maybe even remind yourself, put yourself a, like a discreet reminder on your calendar, uh, just to, to drop a, put a little note saying, just thanking her for marrying you. Put it in the, oh, what was, oh, it's, oh, sorry, it's my hair. I thought there was a hateful bug on me. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's always going to take some getting used to. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I think that's a great idea. So um, those little things, you know, just little reminders, they don't have to cost anything. Um, if you're not a creative person or you can't really think of anything, you can go online and, and, and just search a list, you know, how to, you know, top 100 nice things to do for a wife or girlfriend and, and just make a point of doing those and surprise her and have a little fun with it. P try to figure out places where you can put things that, uh, that, that you haven't before, you know, maybe in the glove box. Sometimes you can even put them in her shoes, you know, some a pair of shoes that she, she wears uh, maybe to a, a fancy event or a, a wedding or something, you know, once a year. And, and she, these little things just kind of pop up and uh, it's, um, it'll, it'll pay dividends. So I think that's a, I think that's a great, great advice from Mailing Matters today. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.